Hello and welcome to the 100 Indie Artists Project. This is a music project designed for and by independent artists to help you firstly get to know some of the incredible musicians in your community, as well as get to know some insights and some tools that you can take on board with your own musical marketing journey. Tell us about who you are as an artist and your background. Hello, thank you for having me. My name is Acoustic Fox. I am a singer-songwriter, solo singer-songwriter from Melbourne. Uh, I started my music career in hard rock bands and uh, that's sort of where I cut my teeth on the live music scene and in the studio and, um, you know, writing with other musicians and really sort of crafting... Um, I guess my songwriter skills uh, very early on and, um, you know, I, I learnt how to sing, I tried to learn how to sing in a rehearsal room with two big Marshall stacks and a, a loud drum kit, so it was a terrible, terrible way to sort of start learning how to sing, so I've had to undo a lot of, you know, mistakes and bad habits that I got into, I'm still learning how to do that, but uh, yeah, so I started in hard rock bands and... Um, when my last hard rock band broke up about 10 years ago, I uh, I dreaded the thought of starting a whole new band and starting from scratch. I thought, nah, I can't do it. And um, I'd been writing a lot of acoustic material in the background and had sort of dabbled in a few gigs here and there. And, um, you know, being in a band can be, can be hard, you know, bringing along four or five other guys... Uh, you know getting them motivated and all that sort of thing and the politics involved and yeah i just really dreaded that thought of starting all over again so because we, we had done pretty well and um i, I just didn't want to sort of start again with a whole new band so i started again by myself as a solo artist i changed my name to acoustic fox and um you know i felt like i had a lot to give and i could sort of and do anything at my own pace and whether it be slow pace or fast pace you know I, I had control and um i guess i really wanted to take control of things in my own music career and uh yeah i've been doing acoustic fox for about 10 years and um you know i miss being in a band but uh being solo has its many perks what musical projects are you working on right now so I actually just released a brand new single called Glimmer um, under Acoustic Fox and a music video as well. So I'm currently, you know, going through the whole motion of promotion and trying to get that out into the world. So that was, uh, yeah, that was a track that um, is probably the hardest track that I've I've worked on so far. Uh, yeah, I've sort of learnt over the last few years in particular how to really dig into a track and get the most out of it that's um you know it's just comes from learning your own skills and sort of what you're capable of i guess and that song took a little bit of a little bit of rewriting and you know rewriting some of the lyrics and the melodies and um yeah i had I'd, i actually shelved it for a year that song so once i came back to it i felt refreshed and and uh really got out of it what i originally wanted to get out of it so yeah, so I've been uh, releasing that. Um, I'm, I'm writing new songs as well for Acoustic Fox. I'm sort of always, you know, writing songs and have have heaps of songs in the in the background there that I'm working on. Some that sit there for for ages and don't get another look at for for months and months. But that's all right; they're always there. And um, yeah, I've actually been playing a lot of electric guitar of late. So I don't know where that's going to lead to. I don't know if uh, you know, I'll start a band or I'd, I'd at least like to do some recording, I think, and um, just get out that side of my uh, my musical capabilities, if that makes sense. So, obviously, I love the acoustic stuff, but um, the electric part is a big part of me. That's where I came from. And um, although I haven't done much to that in the last few years, it's still there. It's always there. It's in my blood. And um, I'd actually like to to show the world, you know, what I can do in that sense. Where do you feel that you're at in your musical journey right now and where would you like to get to? Um, well, you know, I feel like I've come a long way. I know, I know I have, definitely. Uh, 
But at the same time, you know, it might be a bit cliche to say, but I sort of feel like I'm just getting started, really, um, in the sense that I'm only just starting to learn how to really hone in on what I'm uh, what I'm capable of, I guess you would say, you know, in terms of writing and being in the studio and that sort of thing. Um, it's not just a matter of hitting record and putting down what you've got. It's really, really digging into it and getting out what you're what you're capable of. It takes a long time to what's well, taken me a long time to really to really learn that, and I'm still learning. And I guess that's why I feel like, in a lot of ways, I've, I'm just sort of getting started. You know, like I was saying, I I would like to get out into the world. Um, the sort of hard rock side of myself you know it's been probably 10 years or more since um you know i've done that it is out there if you're if you're looking for it but uh i'd like to sort of put out something fresh and you know use the skills that i've learned as a solo singer songwriter to really to really listen you know when i went solo i it really teaches you to listen because you're not up on stage or in the studio with a big band making a lot of noise. It's just you and your voice, and it's very, it's very naked. So it's uh, it's quite terrifying, really. But uh, yeah, I, I, I learned a lot, and um, I forced myself to to keep at it. It wasn't easy, and uh, I feel like I've learned so much in the last ten years. And yeah, I've sort of got my passion back for playing heavy music again and um i would like to get that out into the world as well and like i said i'm i'm still writing more acoustic songs so um i feel like i've got so much more to give um across the board and um that's what i love about being creative what do you love most about being an independent artist i think what i love most about being an independent artist is the fact that um i i get to be in control uh not from a ego standpoint, but just you know, I like to I like to keep moving forward and I like to keep busy and uh, I don't really like to take breaks and that sort of thing. And you know, being in a band, you're you know, you're working with a lot of other personalities and um, you know, also with if you're signed to a record label, you know, you've got a lot of people, no doubt, telling you what to do and how to do things and and that sort of thing and i feel like at some point that is likely to uh stifle your creativity or you know affect that in some way sure it has its benefits as well but um yeah i like being creative and staying true to myself and being able to do what i what i want to do and how i want to do it basically uh yeah just being able to steer my own ship dare I say. What do you find the most challenging about being an independent artist? Well, I think the most challenging thing, uh, particularly as a solo independent artist, is I have to do everything myself, (laughs) Uh, which, you know, I've just mentioned its benefits, but it also makes it more challenging, particularly, I think, I find from the marketing and promotion side of things. It's just a, a time factor, um, you know. Working a day job as well, um, like like most musicians, I guess. Uh, you know, time is a is a challenging factor, and especially when you're a solo artist like myself, you know, everything's on me to to do what needs to be done, and uh, I often feel like a lot of things aren't done or aren't done with the time than it probably deserves just because you're you're under the pump so i think yeah that's that's probably the most challenging thing for me i find as an indie artist is maybe time management or just having enough time what has been your experience in marketing and promoting your music yeah marketing and promotion is probably the hardest thing i've found all along um i've always sort of struggled with that you know Pushing, uh, pushing my music on people. <laughs> I think there's a fine line of pushing it too hard and not pushing it enough, and I'm sort of constantly trying to to skate that line and uh, 
maybe it depends on your personality type, you know, sort of uh, not that outgoing most of the time, so maybe that's a, that's a bit of a, a hindrance on my end. Um, but yeah, I've definitely learnt a lot over the years uh, how to do it better and I've sort of been releasing singles in the last couple of years, so each time I've released a single, uh, you know, I've been learning different things and how to do things better from the last time, so that's been good. Um, but yeah, no doubt one of the most challenging aspects of being an indie artist is the, the marketing promotion, uh, how much money to put into it, where to put that money, uh, how how hard do you hassle your fans and what are the best ways to do that um so yeah it's it's con and you know the the landscape of social media and platforms the way we use them is always changing so i think staying up to date with that you know is uh is always a good thing to do um and yeah, it takes takes a lot of time to to do this marketing and promotion. You know, I'm one of those musicians who just likes to write the songs and record them, and you know, that's it, right? We don't have to do anything else. But no, there's a lot more to it. So yeah, I'm still learning. <laughs> what has been one thing you've learned along the way that has been the biggest game changer for you in music marketing? I would say the. Um, finding your niche market like your targeted audience not the fact that you have to reach every single person in the world or try to just just finding your your market your your targeted audience growing it from there hopefully them telling their friends and family and uh slowly building it from there cuz you can't possibly as much as you'd like to you you want to reach two million people on Facebook when you put out an ad or something like that. But reality is uh, not everyone's going to see it or they're not going to be interested. But um, if you've got your little targeted audience, however big it may be, hopefully it grows from there. I think that was a big, uh, a big game changer for me. And there's been a few people that have talked about that. So... Yeah, I would I would I would say that focusing on and recognizing your niche market or or targeted audience, yeah. What has been your experience with building a fan base and what have you learned along the way? Uh Yeah, that's a tough one. Um I found when I sort of I guess jumped out of the hard rock scene and that all sort of fell apart. A lot of the fans and friends and everything that I'd made in that time didn't necessarily follow me into my solo acoustic adventure. So I really was starting again. You know, I wasn't afraid to start again. Um, but I guess it was a little bit disappointing as well. You know, a lot of my favourite artists, you know, if I follow them in a band, I'll generally be pretty curious if they decide to do another project or or go solo or whatever it might be so yeah i was starting again um and that was around 2012 so yeah we're in social media but i don't think we were really well at least i wasn't really using it as a tool like we do these days with music promotion so I was relying more on gigs and I kept quite busy in the in the live music scene, made lots of friends and, and fans and that sort of thing. Um, these days, you know, we're lucky to sort of have fans and friends all around the world because we've been able to reach out via social media and, you know, we've learnt how to do that in better ways and really use these social media platforms as tools to promote and build our fan base. Um, I still do a mailing list. That's one thing I've kept kept doing. I feel like that's a, a really core thing to have. And um, But yeah, building a, 
a loyal fan base is, is very difficult. I guess if you know your market and um, you're good at promotion, then uh, that's a huge positive. Earning an income within music can be very challenging and often requires a diverse source of income streams. What are some of the streams of income you have relating to your music? Yeah, I, um, I've been lucky enough to have a pretty steady job in the last 20 years, so that's basically been the uh, source of funding my music career, uh, from recordings to musical gear and everything. And uh, aside from that, it's, uh, I guess, just music streaming and um, selling CDs, playing gigs, you know. But depending on what level you're at, that's not necessarily going to fund new recordings and that sort of thing. I've never done crowdfunding or anything like that. I think because uh, cause I've held down a job, you know, I like being independent and um, I didn't feel right sort of asking people for money at any time for, for recordings or whatever it might be. So I've pretty much funded everything myself from my from my job and from, from working. But, um, yeah, little bits and pieces over the years from CD sales, gigs and, you know, music streaming and... I think Bandcamp's a good one. If you can get a, a, a good following on Bandcamp, you know, get a, all your fans or a portion of your fans over to Bandcamp and get them to purchase from there. I think the, uh, not sure how often they do it, but that, what's it called? Like, uh, you know, they do one day every so often where they won't take a cut from any sales. Bandcamp won't take a cut from any sales, which is pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, pretty much self-funded here via via my day job luckily so um yeah what advice would you give to an artist that's watching or listening to this who is beginning to embark on their own independent musical journey who i would um i would say just enjoy what you're doing uh as long as you enjoy what you're doing i think that's a big part of success in itself you know that is success in itself, really. If you're doing something and you, and you enjoy it, you know, that's that's a huge thing. And um, I would say, you know, learn from others. There's, uh, and there's so many good resources on the internet and people you can reach out to and do courses like Kate, you know, she has lots of great courses, um, Kate Westwood. And, uh, you know, there's videos upon videos on you know millions on youtube of um tips and all sorts of things um and just yeah learn from people that have that have been doing it and are doing it and maybe have been doing it a bit longer than you and um i think just as long as you're enjoying it and you're really getting out your creativity that's something that um i make sure i try and do is just really stay connected to my creativity and make sure I'm fulfilling that and I'm not just in the motion of things. Um, and sometimes, you know, that might mean trying something totally different or stepping away from what you used to for a little while. Um, but yeah, just, it's, it's not a, it's not an easy road, but I think if you're enjoying it, then that's, that's a massive bonus, yeah.